Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on spectroscopy as an alternative for soil monitoring. Today's webinar is organized by IEEE GRSS Standards for Earth Observation Technical Committee and presented by Kostas Kariotis. Kostas has been working since 2018 as an associate researcher at the Laboratory of Remote Sensing at Aristotle University of Thessaloniki in Greece. His research is focusing on modeling physical chemical soil properties using spectroscopy and remote sensing techniques. He has actively participated in more than 15 European and national research projects related to Earth observation. And since 2020, he's serving as the secretary of the IEEE P 4005 standards of protocols for soil spectroscopy initiative. For everyone online, Please use the chat or the Q&A box on the bottom if you have any questions for later. And without further ado, Costas, the floor is yours. Thank you, Feiros, for uh, the introduction. Uh, before we start, I would uh, also like to thank you all for joining and also thank GRSS and Hugo for giving me the floor today. Uh, so. Uh, today's uh, presentation is uh, titled Spectroscopy as an Alternative for Soil Monitoring, and it uh, has to do mainly with soil spectroscopy and the need for the development of uh, uh, protocols, standards and protocols, uh, in order to computer trust, in order uh, to have uh, reliable measurements. Uh, spectroscopy is a technique for delineating the chemical composition of a substance from analysis of the variation in the spectrum of uh, uh, light heating. Diffuse reflectance spectroscopy is an uh, analytical technique used to measure the reflectance of light from a sun surface within the visible to near infrared range. Unlike uh, traditional spectroscopy, which measures transmission through the sample, diffuse reflectance captures the light scattered in many directions due to interactions with the sample's particles or surface texture. Uh, this method is particularly effective for analyzing soil, solid or uh, opaque materials, providing insights into their chemical composition, physical properties, and structural features. Uh, spectral signatures are the combination of a reflected or absorbed or transmitted electromagnetic radiation by objects at different wavelengths and can uniquely identify an object. Uh, it is a vector with the amount of uh, electromagnetic radiation reflected per wavelength, and it can be represented in a curve form where the, the x-axis represents the wavelengths, uh, that uh, usually are in nanometers, while the psi axis represents the reflectance or absorbance or emittance. So the per wavelength uh, reflectance is the reflected uh, radiation as a ratio to the incoming radiation. Here at this graph, we can see the constituents that we are most likely to meet uh, in soil like uh, snow, vegetation, uh, dry soil, litter, or water, and how these have different uh, spectral signatures. And the mix of them uh, probably give uh, uh, the spectral signature of, uh, of the soil. Uh, simply speaking, we send a beam of light uh, to soil and we measure what bounces back. Uh, soil spectroscopy, particularly in the vis uh, visible and uh, NIR range, is a powerful tool for uh, assessing soil properties and help quickly and non-destructively. By analyzing the light reflected from soil samples, this technique can provide valuable information about uh, various soil characteristics, such as uh, organic matter content, mineral composition, uh, moisture levels, and nutrient availability. Uh, this rapid and cost-effective method helps improve crop yields, uh, monitor soil degradation, and guide sustainable land use uh, practice. Uh, additionally, it can support large-scale uh, soil monitoring and mapping, which are uh, crucial for environmental uh, concentration. Uh, different chemicals and different properties of the soil interact with different uh, uh, parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. And uh, that's why it is very important to carefully select the sensor that we're going to use uh, to um, develop our applications. A few historical details about uh, 
Soil Spectroscopy, About Spectroscopy, actually, and uh, NIR Theory. Uh, the infrared theory was initially recognized to a certain extent in uh, 1800s by Sir William Herschel in the uh, United Kingdom, in Bath. Herschel discovered the infrared region within the electromagnetic spectrum using a mercury in glass thermometer and he could detect the heating effect of various colors of the spectrum formed by passing sunlight uh, through a glass prism. Uh, he then uh, located the section uh, of the visible spectrum giving the maximum heating fit and discovered that the maximum breaking point exists in a non-visible spectrum, but right beneath the red range. And uh, he named this discovery, discovery the thermometrical spectrum, which was later called infrared. Uh, thermometers continued as radiation detectors until 1829, when Nobel invented the, the thermocap. Uh, the first instrument designed to measure and analyze infrared radiation were developed uh, in uh, the early 20th century. And, are, uh, and they were from two categories, the grating spectrometers and the prism spectrometers. Early infrared spectrometers used diffraction gratings to disperse infrared light into its component wavelengths, allowing for detailed analysis of the spectrum, while the prism spectrometers utilized the uh, prisms made from materials like uh, quartz or sodium chloride to reflect infrared light similar to visible light spectrometers. Uh, in early 90s, 90s uh, Koblenz built a spectrometer highly susceptible to variations and thermal disturbances. He manually rotated the prism between recordings of each spectral element, captured and published hundreds of spectra between uh, 1,000 and 15,000 nanometers, discovering with a, a major discovery the hydroxide absorption buds that are around 2,700 nanometers. Also, Robert Williams uh, Wood focused his work on uh, improving and refining infrared spectrometers, enhancing their functionality and effectiveness for scientific research. Uh, he conducted extensive in investigation into the properties of infrared radiation, exploring how different materials interact with his part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, he also contributed uh, to advancements in diffraction gratings, which are essential components of uh, spectrometers, as mentioned. Uh, Carl Norris uh, at the USDA uh, began to explore the potential of NIR spectroscopy and they recognized that NIR could be used to measure the moisture content in grains, marking the start of NIR practical applications. He developed early methods for near NIR spectroscopy, including uh, calibration techniques and the use of NIR for quantitative analysis of agricultural products. His initial project was to design, develop, and uh, perfect the instrumentation that would automatically sort eggs. And at that time, as this was labor uh, intensive, error prone process of visual inspection and counting by hand, and Norris developed a new technique using light transmittance and reflectance principles to automatically sort eggs by cell color and detect the presence of internal blood spots and bacteria that cause spoilers. Uh, his early success with the use of uh, light transmittance principles with X led him to explore and learn that this technique could be used to test the interior quality of other agricultural products. And he discovered, for example, that certain interior defects, such as browning in apples or hollow heart in potatoes, alter the transparency of the product to certain wavelengths of light. Uh, then the, the, the first spectrometers appeared around 1960s, the, with the first one to be the model 51 uh, from Erdinel Mer and Beckman Instruments, uh, which gives a continuous scanning range from uh, 400 to uh, 250 centi centimeter at the uh, power of minus one. The spectra are recorded on convenient sized chart paper without gaps or overlaps. Uh, also, the first prototype Backman spectrophotometer, the Model A, was, was created at National Technology Laboratories in 1940. 
and use tang tungsten light source with a glass fairy prism as a monochromator. Uh, the early spectrometers uh, were relatively simple devices that used prism or diffraction gratings to separate light into component wavelets, often relying on manual operation and visual observation of, for data collection. Uh, these instruments were typically bulky, less sensitive, and had limited resolution. In contrast, modern spectrometers are highly advanced in incorporating digital technology, computer integration, and uh, more advanced detectors such as uh, charge cable devices or photodiode uh, arrays. This uh, advance will allow automatic, precise, and high resolution measurements over a broader range of wavelength, uh, wavelengths. They are also more compact, uh, portable, some of them, and uh, capable for uh, real time analysis. I select three spectrometers to show, with the first uh, to be the FOSS XDS Rapid Content Analyzer which is used for the development of the Lucas Oil Spectral Library. It consists of uh, two detectors and it has a nominal resolution of two nanometers. Uh, the second one is uh, the ASD lab spec. That is also the ASD field spec, which is one of the best sellers and have been used extensively for soil spectroscopy applications. And it also consists of uh, two detectors and has nominal resolutions of three nanometer at the visible and NIR and six nanometers at the SWIR. The third one spectrometer is the spectral evolution PSR plus uh, 3500, which is the one that our laboratory uses. It can be operated both as a benchtop and as a portable spectrometer and has three detectors in the resolutions of 2.8 at visible and NIR, eight nanometers at lower SWIR, and six nanometers at the right part of SWIR. The main goal of soil spectroscopy is uh, to capture accurate, compatible, and repeatable spectral signature of soils. As these instruments are very sensitive, minor changes to the operation protocol or to environmental factors will surely affect the capture spectral signature. A collection of spectral signatures accompanied with the chemical analysis of the soil sample are uh, called spectral libraries. Uh, more concretely, they consist of uh, three things. The spectral data, that are uh, the vectors of the spectral signatures. The soil properties, as analyzed in the chemical uh, lab, which most frequently are the texture, organic carbon, moisture, pH, nutrients, and many, many more. And the soil sample metadata, which are a, a unique soil sample ID, the location, the depth, the conditions that uh, we met, a user, the equipment used, date, time, elevation, land use, and many, many, many more. At the right part of the screen, we chose to give the spatial distribution of two soil spectral libraries. One is uh, the Lucas, the uh, most well-known uh, spectral library across Europe, and the most commonly used and also a regional soil spectral library, uh, the GeoCAD. Uh, the Lucas uh, Land Use Cover Area Frame Survey is a systematic European-wide study designed to collect detailed and standardized data on land use, land cover, and soil properties. It is conducted by Eurostat, the statistical office of the European Union, and uh, Lucas aims to provide high-quality comparable data for environmental monitoring and research across the Europe, and is conducted every three years. The Lucas 2015 Soil Spectral Library is the most recent uh, soil spectral library. Developed as part of the Lucas survey, it contains more than 20,000 spectral signatures and chemical analysis. It is publicly op open and accessible through the uh, European Commission portal. As it was developed with a single instrument, the FOSS XDS the, that we saw before, and also every measurement is monitored, is uh, conducted under monitored environmental conditions. All measurements are compatible between each other, resulting to a robust soil spectral library that is perfect for, for calibrating machine learning models for the estimation of the soil parameters provided by the Lucas uh, Soil Survey. Uh, the second uh, spectral library that I decided to show is the GeoCRAD. 
uh, is a regional uh, soil spectral library that has, was developed in the context of uh, Horizon 2020 Project GeoCAD. It uh, represents the Balkans, uh, the North Africa region, and the Middle East. And it was the first standardized soil spectral library. As uh, this library was developed uh, uh, with the users of different spectrometers for each subset, and unlike the Lucas that was uh, developed with a single spectrometer, the measurements by themselves are not compatible for meriting. Uh, for this reason, uh, harmonization techniques were used based on soil standards, which will be described later, making it the first standardized uh, SSL. Uh, further to Lucas and GeoCradle, there are many notable uh, soil spectral libraries or collections of soil spectral libraries. For instance, the Global Soil Spectral Library has more than uh, 23,000 spectra from 92 countries. Probably this uh, number is outdated. Representing seven con continents, it includes spectra from soil in the World Soil Information System collection, which were recorded by the World Agroforestry Center. Uh, also, uh, the Brazilian Soil Spectral Library has spectral data from uh, more than five. Uh, 50,000 different sums donated by 81 researchers representing 69 institutions from 26 Brazilian states. Uh, one uh, more recent and notable effort is the Open Soil Spectral Library, that is a collection of SSLs and uh, mainly consists of the Kellogg Soil Survey uh, from BSDA, the World Agroforest Center, Center SSLs. MIR libraries from Africa, Soil Information Service. Also, it contains Lucas and other smaller ones. Uh, the Woodwell Climate Center, along, along with the OSSL, delivers also a suite of tools for soil spectroscopy enthusiasts with detailed manuals on how to develop your model and tools on how to merge with existing SSLs. So this uh, effort uh, also needs some time from you. It is very interesting. As mentioned, I select uh, GeoCradle SSL as a paradigm, as uh, this project highlighted the importance of developing standardization and harmonization techniques, aiming to make different SSLs compati compatible and comparable. Uh, with standardization, we mean uh, the, users, the introduction of a set of techniques and methodologies applied to minimize variations introduced by different instruments, conditions, or measurement protocols. While by harmonization, we mean a set of techniques and methodologies applied to adjust and align spectral data from different sources. Uh, the procedure followed in GeoCral is described at the work from Ben Dor, Ong, and Lau, which was the base for the protocols of uh, soil spectroscopy, the basis for the P4005 protocol that will be presented in a while, and was first appeared in 2013. Uh, 14. Uh, the authors of uh, this document, Bendora, Ong, and Lau, uh, used two soils from Australia to ensure the accuracy and consistency of spectral measurements. Both are sourced from a specific location. They are Lucky Bay and Willy Bay. Lucky Bay is known for its stable and well-characterized properties, typically containing minerals such as quartz, uh, feldspar, and kaolinite. Uh, which have uh, distinct uh, spectral features. If you see uh, the, the curves of uh, Lucky Bay and Willy Bay, they are quite smooth. They do not uh, have a huge absorption thing, uh, peaks. Uh, similarly, the Willy Bay soil contains minerals like calcite, montmorillonite, and tillite, with uh, characteristic spectral features such as absorption bands near. 2300 and uh, 2400 nanometers. And uh, these standards are used uh, for calibrating spectroscopic instruments and uh, the validation of, uh, of soil spectral data, or the accuracy of soil spectral data. They ensure uh, comparability across different studies and uh, instruments. The reference measurements are taken by CSIRO in Australia. And one soil sample from each, from Willy Bay and Lucky Bay, is delivered to every laboratory that desires to develop a standardized spectral library. 
the distribution is also performed from uh, Tel Aviv University, from uh, Yale Bendor. Uh, during the development of the new spectral libraries, the, these standards are measured and compared to the golden measurements, as we say, the measurement that CSIRO uh, distributes, and the vector with correction of factors per wavelength is created. Uh, this correction is applied to each uh, uh, measurement batch, uh, resulting to a harmonized SSL. Uh, here uh, at the bottom of the screen, we can see how two different soil samples were measured by different instruments. And uh, after applying the harmonization, we can see that uh, they tend to coincide with the reference uh, measurement. And uh, reaching to 2020, we can find the inauguration of uh, P4005 standards and protocols for soil spectroscopy working group, um, which is uh, one of the main topics of uh, uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, the scope of uh, this working group is to develop a standard and protocol scheme that will be well agreed upon by the whole soil spectral and remote sensing community for visual NIR and shortwave infrared region. Uh, the need is uh, pretty much covered from what we, we saw before and has to do mainly for the harmonization of uh, different SSLs, how we can produce uh, guidelines on how to measure uh, spectral data that will be uh, compatible with measurements from uh, different researchers from different laboratories. Uh, this working group is chaired by Alben Tor and uh, supported by Sabine Sabrija. And uh, during the four years of uh, our activity, we have been focusing on developing the protocol of soil spectroscopy by performing different exercises and activities. Some of them are the cross-laboratory trials to assess the protocol effectiveness and the reliability, excuse me. Uh, to evaluate different soil and non-soil materials with internal standardization and spectra correction, correction further to the Willy Bay and Lucky Bay that presented before. Uh, to also assess uh, measurement stability and reproducibility under var various instrumentations. And uh, develop quality control indicators for soil properties and prediction models. Uh, to meet our objectives, more than uh, 100 single uh, researchers have contributed, aiming uh, to develop uh, guidelines on how to standardize measurement procedures, to harmonize uh, SSLs, enhance uh, measurements comparability, also to bridge uh, the lab and the field measurements, which are two totally different things because in the laboratory, you can make sure that you have almost uh, completely controlled the uh, environmental uh, parameters, while in the field, uh, everything can affect your measurement. And also, we, we aim to provide tools for uh, uh, the analysis of the spectral measurements. Uh, the working group is divided in six subgroups that uh, namely are the laboratory optical operational scheme, the thermal operational scheme, which is uh, currently paused because we uh, focus our efforts in uh, near infrared and visible uh, parts of the, the electromagnetic region. The subgroup number three, which uh, focuses on data saving and archiving and aims to provide uh, uh, guidelines on uh, how to effectively store and manage the spectral measurements. Uh, we have a working group for uh, cross calibration for spectral exchange and is responsible for developing protocols and techniques to ensure spectral exchangeability and cross calibration between different optical measurement systems. Uh, the subgroup number five uh, about spectral performance assessment and the subgroup number six, the field operational scheme, which uh, aims to transfer the uh, guidelines uh, we develop for the laboratory to the field. Sorry. Uh, we selected to share some snapshots of uh, two activities uh, that we held uh, the last years. 
The first one are the cross-laboratory trials where 10 laboratories perform ring trials of soil sands. And uh, we calibrated models for estimating soil organic carbon as models benchmarks uh, property. And after that, we benchmark the models before and after the application of harmonization. Each laboratory followed the protocol developed in the context of P4005 working group. And uh, as a first result, we can see uh, the variability of spectra for a specific soil sample with high organic carbon content before and after harmonization and see how close the spectral signature tend to go by applying the, the correction. Uh, I need to mention at this point that this analysis was, uh, th this uh, activity was uh, organized by Woodville Climate Research Center and uh, the analysis was, before, was supported by the University of Catholic Bulletin. And uh, these two images are provided by Marmar Sabetizade. And uh, here we can see the standard deviation of the estimation uh, of soil organic carbon cord content as zeta score, Z scores from the R and C before and after the correlation. Uh, we we'll used PLSR model in case it is the simplest and most accepted model. And at this point, I need to mention that uh, machine learning modeling is uh, a huge part of soil spectroscopy, indispensable part of soil spectroscopy, as it is the medium of connecting spectra uh, with the soil properties. But at this presentation, we will not go deep in uh, machine learning. We will use for our exams the simplest models. models. But uh, for sure, there are more sophisticated methods that provide uh, more accurate uh, results. Uh, the second activity was the validation of the protocol by measuring under the same condition, the same targets with the different spectrometers. Uh, uh, this April, uh, we trans transferred six spectrometers at the uh, University of Valencia, and the objectives were to compare the spectral signatures from the same soil sands under the same uh, environment conditions, but from different users and different equipment. And the second objective was to compare the spectral signatures from the same targets and the same instrument under different setups. And by different setups, I mean uh, the contact probe and the bare fiber. Uh, all groups measured uh, with the contact probe, the spectrometer uh, of the spectrometer, uh, six soil sums that were provided uh, by the Tau Soil uh, Tel Aviv University Soil Archive. And also a sand that was provided, that is a source from a Czech Republic. Uh, the sums were uh, air dried, and uh, each group also measured will be in like base standards. Uh, the cross instrument comparison analysis is uh, currently ongoing, but I can share some results from uh, AUTH uh, laboratory spectrometer. At the left of the screen, we can see the reputability of uh, one measurement that were uh, archived by following, that were achieved by following the B4005 protocol. At the left, uh, we can see how under two different setups, uh, we, at the right, uh, sorry, uh, we can see how under two different uh, setups we measure the same target and we manage to produce very similar spectral curves. Uh, the first measurement was taken with a contact probe, while the second was taken with a, a optic fiber, a bare fiber placed inside the soil probe, which is a patented part that simulates dark box conditions for usage in field. Uh, it also has an internal stable illumination that is perfect for measuring uh, soil in situ, where the ambient factor effects and especially ambient light affect the spectral signature. Uh, moving on to some uh, challenges that uh, soil spectroscopy faces uh, at the moment. The most important is the one that we currently try to address through P4005 uh, working group is the lack of standards and protocols. Uh, there are many efforts uh, to introduce uh, standards, but uh, we need to decide a uniformly accepted standard. Uh, 
Uh, even though the spectral signatures are uh, populating the spectral uh, libraries day by day, they, they are limited spectral libraries. And uh, we have insufficient data from uh, all the uh, soil types. And uh, there is some reluctance for soil spectroscopy uh, because uh, traditional laboratories may be hesitant to adopt new technologies and methods. Also, the inherent variability in soil properties across different regions and depths can complicate the development of universal models. And uh, the last uh, challenge I would like to mention is the integration with traditional methods as soil spectroscopy needs to be effectively integrated with traditional laboratory methods to complement and enhance them and not substitute them. And uh, at this part uh, of the presentation, I want to share uh, uh, some modern solutions from my colleagues. This uh, is a presentation from uh, Tel Aviv University. It uh, refers to the soil probe, the one mentioned before, uh, which enables the user to acquire uh, full and stable surface reflectance measurements of any material under uh, varying environmental conditions and eliminating operator dependence, uh, effects from atmosphere and uh, surface disturbances. Uh, at uh, this example, uh, uh, we investigate the two main methods that are commonly used for spectral measurements uh, in field, which is the contact probe uh, that enables us to measure small surface area by contact without dependence on environmental conditions, and the bare fi fiber measurements that depends on environmental condition influenced by the operator, but also enables us to measure in large surf surface without interrupting the texture. Uh, the soil crop product was uh, evaluated in laboratory and outdoor under different conditions compared to the bare fiber and contact crop. At the, this graph, we can see that uh, measuring with bare fiber is very susceptible, susceptible to external illumination when used in, uh, in situ. As, uh, and at these three charts, we have uh, measurements at uh, different uh, time frames. And we can see the variability of the spectrum of the same soil sample with uh, bare fiber, while with soil pro, uh, it is independent on what time you're going to take the measurements. Uh, the second application is a little bit more complicated and it is the spike bottom up approach and can be used as a connection with remote sensing. Uh, the spiked bottom-up approach is a method designed to enhance soil property predictions by integrating local site-specific soil sums with a large regional soil spectral library. This approach leverages spectral similarities and spatial proximities to improve the accuracy of soil property estimations. Uh, the process begins with the selection of a small representative set of soil sums from a local site and these site-specific sums are then merged with an existing regional SSL to create an augmented SSL. Of course, we use the harmonization techniques that we mentioned before. Uh, this merging process, known as spiking, enhances the regional SSL with site-specific information. And then a machine learning model, no matter which one you're going to choose, is developed using the augmented SSL and predictions are made at the sampling points using the developed model. Uh, these predictions are then extended across the entire study area using imaging spectroscopy from Earth observation data. Uh, in uh, When we applied this uh, technique, uh, we use uh, Sentinel-2, but of course, uh, now we can use any imagery you would like. And uh, the modeling of the Earth observation data can uh, result in spatial explicit maps of soil properties. Uh, this approach offers uh, several benefits, including cost efficiency by reducing the need for extensive laboratory analysis through the use of existing spectral data. And it achieves high prediction accuracy by combining local and regional spectra information and scalable applicable to large areas in different regions with varying uh, soil characteristics. 
Uh, however, uh, challenges uh, include ensuring that the local SAMs are representative of the entire site spectral diversity. And uh, of course, to use the harmonization techniques uh, if you gonna merge it with a big SSL. And uh, the last application that I wanted to share is uh, the usage of low-cost sensors as a crowdsourcing technique to rapidly produce estimation of soil properties. Uh, this was performed uh, by our laboratory in the context of the uh, Horizon 2020 Dion project. And our overarching objective was to de develop an easy-to-use uh, tool to be used either by farmers or by paying agencies uh, that would enable them to collect in situ top uh, soil spectra and convert them to estimation of soil health indicators in a real or almost real time. Our main target was soil organic carbon claim pH, but uh, this uh, methodology can be transferred uh, to uh, a wider set of soil properties based on the sensor selection. Uh, our procedure can be described in three interrelated parts. And first we have the user end component that employs the device per se, which is a low cost portable spectrometer. And that can be operated by a mobile phone and a mobile application that uh, was developed uh, explicitly for this reason. The application also acted as a bridge with a second component, which is a server side infrastructure. There, all collected data were stored and archived, and with the application of suitable machine learning models, uh, were translated to estimation of uh, the free soil properties. Uh, here, I decided to share uh, a snapshot of uh, uh, the application. At first part, uh, the user uh, logins uh, either with uh, his Google account or the credentials that were uh, given by the administrator. And in both cases, the user uh, requires to register themselves. Then the user can proceed to the next step where they can uh, take the soil measurement. Uh, of course, the first part is uh, to take a, a wide reference measurement that will be uh, unlocks the second button, which is the soil sample. And uh, one of uh, my favorite features are that uh, in case that the internet connection is interrupted, the user can post the data asynchronously, meaning that they can refresh the application when the internet connection is established. And uh, this enables the user to use it uh, in situ. The six pilot areas that uh, are uh, located in uh, three regions in Lithuania and in Cyprus, uh, they were proposed from the national bank agencies of the two countries. And uh, they cover around 20 square kilometers and around 4,000 parcels. Also at this application, there is the, the presence of a uh, remote sensing. Because uh, at the first part, we created a time series of uh, Sentinel-2 imagery. Uh, we applied the uh, virtual identification uh, mask methodology as proposed by the first reference from Demate, Professor Demate. And uh, at the bare soil of the, each of the uh, pilot areas, uh, we uh, applied the spectra-based clustering on the Sentinel-2 bands and uh, performed a K-means clustering to proceed to a dissimilarity selection, meaning that uh, we would select a predefined number of uh, pixels that are representative of the whole area. And then at this uh, set of uh, points, uh, we perform a split, and some of them were used as reference uh, points that uh, we perform so uh, soil analysis uh, for uh, model calibration, and uh, all of, and them and the rest uh, used uh, for uh, taking spectral signatures. So we develop a soil spectral library that uh, uh, captures high variability. 
if you uh, if you consider that the regions were quite small, not very extensive. And uh, in order to achieve this spectral data harmonization, we used uh, the two soil standards me measured before. Uh, the need for harmonization in this experiment lies to the fact that we used many different uh, sensors from the same vendor, but, uh, diff and, uh, but different uh, operators, because we, we distributed more than 20 portable spectrometers to uh, end users with, uh, without any explicit knowledge of soil spectroscopy. We just made um, a demo on how to use. We assigned them the uh, point selection, the point, uh, the selected points, and asked them to pick a, a, a soil sample and also capture the measurement. And here we can see the results. Uh, we performed a random forest regression. Uh, for soil organic carbon, we can see at the table uh, at the bottom of the screen that before uh, the harmonization, we couldn't capture the required correlation. And this lies to the fact that we used many different sensors from the same vendor. But after applying the harmonization, uh, the R squared from 0 to 19 uh, reached uh, 0 0.72. And we can uh, see how the uh, root mean squared error drops. Also, we did the same uh, for clay and pH. And uh, for uh, a low cost sensor, this uh, accuracy of 0 0.72, 0 0.77, 0 0.76 can consider very high. And to conclude, I would also like to mention four notable projects that are related to soil spectroscopy. The first one is AGP Soils uh, and uh, the AI for soil health. AGP Soils aims to develop robust in-field monitoring protocols for soil carbon stocks and fertility, while AI for soil health initiative integrates data from uh, various pilot sites and employs artificial intelligence to enhance soil health assessment by providing providing rapid non-invasive analysis of soil properties directly in the field. And uh, the project also aims to develop uh, soil health indicators that aggregates multiple, uh, uh, an index that aggregates multiple indicators or descriptors as they are uh, mentioned from the last uh, year. And to offer tools for farmers and plant managers to improve soil uh, management, their soil management practices. Uh, there is also MRV for Shock project, which uh, is uh, focused on uh, CO2 sequestration and aims to integrate high resolution spectral data from demo sites. And the project aims to develop a standardized, transparent, and cost effective system for assessing shock dynamics and facilitating results based payments for carbon farming practices. And the last one is the soil spec uh, for uh, global good that was mentioned before and uh, is creating the open soil spectral library. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I will also be at uh, Igers next week in Athens on Monday. So if you want uh, to meet in person, please uh, feel free to contact me. All right, thank you so much for the great presentation, Kostas. It's very interesting what you have been working on. So now it's time for questions. Uh, let me check. Um, so we had a question from, I think, from, uh, Emilio uh, wants to know, uh, where he can find the data to integrate your JIS or Python software. I think it was somewhere on slide 29 or 30. Uh, let me move to slide 29. I'm not sure about which, uh, uh, about which data. Uh, I mentioned twice, uh, once that uh, some data are developed uh, in the context of Open Soil Spectra Library, so they can refer to there. And uh, the other tools that I mentioned was developed from uh, P4005 uh, working group. 
This is an open working group, so anyone who wants to participate can drop me a message and I will uh, directly add them uh, to the mailing list. Okay, perfect. So another question from Akash for the selection of the AI model, how can we select parameters for SOC? Uh, it, it's mostly trial and error uh, to my experience. Uh, it's not only this, the proper selection of a, a model, but uh, also there are various spectral preprocessing techniques. Uh, most people are using a partially square regression because it has a, a, a high degree of explainability. It can uh, let you know why you reached to this uh, uh, result. But uh, there are various models that can be used, like uh, random forest, or if you have a uh, wide data set, you can go with uh, deep learning techniques like convolutional neural networks. But uh, it, it was not proved that a single model fits for all. It's fit for purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. I think uh, Akash, who uh, sent this question, is raising his hand, so I'm allowing him to talk. So I think you can talk now, Akash, if you want to say something. Sorry, your, your sound is not very clear. Oh, okay, just um, can you please write on the chat box maybe what you wanted to say? Okay, so in the meanwhile, uh, another question. So please inform us what soil parameters can be estimated by spectroscopy. Uh, the most uh, widely used parameter is uh, soil organic carbon, it's, uh, but also you can estimate clay, uh, mineralogical composition, uh, total nitrogen, uh, which, uh, if I'm correct, uh, is the also the parameter that has the highest accuracy if you model Luca spectra. Uh, pH, uh, calcium carbonates, and um, electrical conductivity. These are widely tested, but uh, also you can uh, measure moisture, and it is a very wide set of soil parameters. Okay, perfect. Yeah, many people from the audience are uh, congratulating you for the great work. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Yeah, so another question from Mohamed Ghassan. So uh, can you give the difference between using spectroscopy, spectrometers, and remote sensing in terms of accuracy and applicability? Uh, spectroscopy can be considered as the limit of remote sensing because they have pretty much the same principles. If you reach a, a, an uh, X accuracy with a spectroscopy, then this will be the uh, maximum accuracy that you can uh, uh, reach with uh, remote sensing techniques. Now that we are transitioning to the hyperspectral era, with the new satellites that have been introduced. Uh, this gap is uh, slowly but steadily closing. So we are uh, ready, we are very optimistic that uh, uh, we will have a very accurate uh, results with a remote sensing. Mm -hmm. Nice, okay. So the next question is from uh, Julian. Uh, he's from Colombia and greeting you. Um, so his question is, uh, have studies of these methods been carried out in soils with rock fragments? Most of uh, these uh, uh, methods have been uh, used in laboratory conditions and uh, we follow a, a strict uh, pre-processing uh, technique. Uh, first of all, they come from problems, uh, mostly. And uh, we are dry the samples and uh, 
crush them and pass them through a two millimeter sieve. But are uh, from agricultural soils mainly. But there are many studies uh, that have uh, used all the soil types. Okay, perfect. Um, so another question from Hassan. So he's asking how can he join the working group related to this standard? Uh, Hassan, please send me a message. You can see my email here. It's kbkariotis at auth.gr with uh, your name and affiliation. And I will uh, add you to the working group mailing list. It is open for everyone. But for, in order to be a voting member, you have to attend at least uh, two meetings. Uh, in general, uh, we have meetings uh, every couple of months, one or two months. And now we are at the final stage of uh, the draft uh, development. And uh, most of the uh, work is carried offline. But for sure, you can uh, join the next uh, meeting that has not been announced, announced yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So another question from Wewid, uh, how do you develop this met this model on the area that mostly that are mostly covered by vegetation? Uh, this is a, a totally different topic. Uh, uh, because our intention was to couple it with uh, remote sensing data and uh, it is uh, very easy when you have uh, exposed soil, soils that you can directly see them uh, that are not covered through vegetation. Uh, when you are using vegetation, you can use the same technique to select uh, the sampling locations, uh, but you have uh, uh, to use the spectral indices uh, for uh, developing your models instead of uh, direct uh, usage of uh, the bands of the uh, of the satellite. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. But pretty much it is the same uh, logic, but your results will be way inferior than uh, having direct uh, uh, soil exposed soils. Mm -hmm. Okay, so another question from uh, Athena. So what do you think about uh, commercial portable devices that are already used in the field to do PK and pH fertilization? So can we trust them? Uh, as mentioned during the presentation, soil spectroscopy uh, should be considered as an extension to the laboratory. So if you take uh, 10 measurements uh, and, uh, and bring them, take 10 soil sums and analyze them into the laboratory, you should uh, augment them by spectral measurements from other 10, another 10 or another 100. But yes, uh, there are studies and experiments that have proven that uh, they have very nice uh, accuracy, taking into consideration that uh, you built a, a new spectral library that uh, has the characteristics of uh, the same of the area that you investigate. It is very difficult to develop a global uh, soil spectral library and a global model, but it is uh, uh, way better if you uh, develop a regional models. So if you want to measure something, uh, an area, you should use uh, soil sums from this area. Okay, nice. Um, so one question, uh, one more question uh, from Emilio. Um, he didn't understand if the validation of the ground data for the clustering is done by sampling the soil or not. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, so what do you think about combining spectroscopy and remote sensing techniques to involve and develop models? Uh, it's a nice idea to use uh, remote sensing data and other environmental variables as uh, ancillary variables. Uh, then you move from the PLS uh, model that I uh, mentioned before to more sophisticated models that have uh, different layers of uh, data inputs that for sure uh, uh, can leverage this knowledge. Also, the experts' knowledge is uh, very important. Uh, if you have uh, 
uh, in situ investigations on of uh, what uh, are the conditions of the field. And this could also add an extra information to the model. Good. But, okay. yeah, but yes, remote sensing uh, data uh, and also from uh, different sources. Uh, uh, you can use uh, a radar data for this yep. purpose. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. So the next question is for the standard standardization of spectra. What are the methods or algorithms that can be used for this step? Uh, it was mentioned. Uh, these are the, uh, these two uh, soil samples that are uh, pretty much featureless. That do not have absorption peaks. Uh, they have very few. So at the uh, Seaside Australia, Australia, they have uh, measured this sample many many times and provided uh, a reference measurement. And then uh, you can uh, use your sample, the, the will be and likely be standard that can be received upon request, and measure it after batch uh, of spectral measurements, and calculate the coefficient factors, of, uh, which are practic practically the differences from the spectral measurement. And this results uh, to a vector with uh, a correction factor. And then you multiply uh, the spectral signature of uh, the unstandardized spectral signature with this uh, correction factor, and you have the harmonized spectral signature. This is pretty much the procedure, but uh, there are also a, a Python, I think, uh, ready scripts for this uh, purpose. But you can do it also in Excel. It is uh, very simple. Okay, awesome. Okay. So the next question is by Petros. Uh, is it possible to use remote spectroscopy to verify USD of pesticides? Uh, very nice question. Theoretically, yes, but the pesticides uh, have very, very low concentrations. Um, and uh, if you manage uh, to find uh, traces of pesticides, that will not be through direct uh, identification. It will be due to cross correlations. The effect of the pesticides to your target will be shown in your spectral signature, not the the, the substance that you are uh, that you are looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you use in high amounts, then yes, it would be much easier. Yeah, I think that answers the question. So uh, another question, are there relations between soil spectroscopy and visual soil assessment? Uh, I'm not sure about this question, uh, but I think yes, because uh, soil spectroscopy also takes into consideration the uh, RGB region, the visible region. So they are highly correlated. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure if there are studies uh, that uh, merge these two techniques and uh, provide better uh, results. OK, perfect. So lastly, one question is not technical. So is there um, any training program for soil spectroscopy for PhD students you know about, maybe? <laughs> I know because I have attended this. Uh, the last two years, uh, Aarhus University, Aarhus University in Denmark, uh, organized uh, a, a PhD uh, class in early September. I'm not sure if it's going to happen this year. <laughs> I don't want to promise something uh, that uh, does not hold. And uh, also you can uh, follow the Open Soil Spectral Library repositories that uh, have very nice exercises uh, there. Great, okay. Yeah, I think we answered all questions. So thank you so much. And thanks everyone for joining us today. And uh, yeah, we are, we'll be looking forward to see you in our future webinars. Thank you, Costas. Do you want to say Thank something? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for hosting and coordinating this uh, very nice webinar. Yeah. Thank you too. And see you 
at iGars next week. <laughs>